from the Marquis de Tocqueville, a Frenchman who made a tour of the United States because he was curious. He wanted to know what it was that made the United States great. And he wrote a book. I'm not going to go through a lot of the things that I read the last time, but he said that if we should ever come to the time that we would lose our Father's God, we would lose our freedoms. You know, we're seeing an awful lot of our nation losing our Father's God. Things could be like that. I was reading in the paper just the other day, somebody contributing to the voice of the people, letters to the editor. He was saying the time should come when these Christians, these evangelicals, these fundamentalists should, should recognize that our founding fathers were not Christians. They did not rely on the Bible. They established the separation of church and state, which incidentally, the Constitution says nothing about it. I think you know that. But I would like to share with you some things that some of our previous presidents said concerning God's Word. John Adams, second president of the United States, he says, I examined all as well as my narrow sphere, my straightened means, and my busy life will allow me. And the result is that the Bible is the best book in the world. Amen. His son, John Quincy Adams, who was also the fifth president of the United States, says, so great is my veneration for the Bible that the earlier my children begin to read it, the more confident will be my hope that they will be prove useful citizens to their country and respectable members of society. Calvin Coolidge, you know, silent cow, guy who never spoke many words. There was one time that a woman came up to Calvin Coolidge and she says, I have a little wager with my friends that I could get you to speak more than three words. And he responded by saying, you lose. Calvin Coolidge said, there is no other book which with the Bible can be compared and no other reading that means so much for the human race. It is the support of the strong, the consolation of the weak, the dependence of organized government, and the foundation of religion. U.S. has grants. Hold fast to the Bible as the sheet anchor of your liberties. Write his precepts upon your hearts and practice them in your lives. To the influence of this book, we are indebted for all progress made in our civilization. And to this, we must look to as our guide in the future. Thomas Jefferson, I have always said, and will always say, that the studious perusal of the sacred volume will make better citizens, better fathers, and better husbands. I have one more here, and that's Benjamin Harrison, one you then never hear much about. It is out of the Word of God that a system has come to make life sweet. If you blot out of your statute book your constitution, your family life, and all that is taken from the sacred book, what would be left? What would be left to bind our society together? Wow. I mean, these men believe something, did they not? <clears throat> and I'm going to take a liberty because I was impressed by something that I came across just this week. 
a prayer that George Washington had written in his devotional diary. We know very little about these men, and we hear certain things, but uh, sometimes when you get to read them, it makes an impression on your life. It's a little bit longer than I would like to, but I'm impressed, and I hope you are. Oh, eternal and everlasting God, I presume to present myself this morning before thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to accept my humble and hearty thanks, that it had pleased thy great goodness to keep me and preserve me the night past from all dangers poor mortals are subject to, and has given me sweet and pleasant sleep, whereby I find my body refreshed and comforted for performing the duties of this day, in which I beseech thee to defend me from all perils of body and soul, direct my thoughts, my, my words, and work, wash away my sins in the immaculate blood of the Lamb, and purge my heart by thy Holy Spirit from the dross of my natural corruption, that I may with more freedom of mind and liberty of will serve thee, the everlasting God in righteousness and holiness this day. And all the days of my life increase my faith in the sweet promises of the gospel. Give me repentance from dead works, pardon my wanderings, direct my thoughts unto thyself, the God of my salvation. Teach me how to live in thy fear, labor in thy service, and ever to run in the ways of thy commandments. Make me always watchful over my heart that neither the terrors of conscience or the loathings of holy duties, the love of sin, or an unwillingness to depart this life may cast me into a spiritual slumber. But daily pray me more and more into the likeness of thy Son, Jesus Christ, that living in thy fear and dying in thy favor, I may in thy appointed time attain unto the resurrection of the just and to eternal life. Bless my family, my friends and kindred. Unite us all in praises and glorifying thee in all our works begun, continued, and ended. That we shall come to make our last account before our blessed Savior. How about that? You ever heard anything like that about George Washington? I bet you haven't. George Washington also was in an Anglican Church of England. The Church of England preached the gospel back in those days. Hardly do it anymore. But, but it also, when he was in New York in the battle for New York and uh, our revolution, he went to the first Baptist church, which now is on 78th Street and Broadway. I don't know where it was back then. He wanted the pastor to baptize him because he wanted to be baptized by immersion. And if you were to visit the 78th Street Baptist Church, they have, they have a plaque to pay honor to uh, this man who was known as the father of our country. We have so many people today that are unbelievers. We have so many people in government. We have so many people in academia. Uh, our, our school system, both at all grades, in elementary, middle school, high school, and, and college, university levels, uh, we have we have people who do not not only believe, don't believe, but they ruin the faith of our children. Blessed is a nation whose God is the Lord, and the people whom he had chosen for his inheritance. 